Yeah, and, and I think that's why skating in today's game is so important because if you can skate, whether you're skilled enough to be a first-line player or a fourth-line player, it's, it's such an important part of the game right now that you can be an unbelievable skater, win face-offs, and make a million dollars in the NHL right now, you know? You can't be a poor skater and win face-offs and make a million dollars. It just it doesn't work like that anymore, you know? So it, it's it's the one skill that every player I, – I mean, even now I got Vancouver and Edmonton up on the TV, and, like, you can watch these guys. Like, they all skate well. There, there's no such thing as a poor skater anymore in the NHL. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're not all great skaters, but I mean they're all they all really good skaters, and and they obviously differentiate themselves. Some are better laterally, change of direction, backwards, forwards, but but at the end of the day, they're all pretty good skaters. Like yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean you just said it right. They're not all Connor McDavid's, or they're not all they don't all don't have edge control like like Sidney Crosby and can turn on a dime and protect a puck like that. But I mean you watch all of them, they. Some some have ugly strides and 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 some look not as graceful as other, but they they all skate and they all move, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and going to our final question here, uh, some stories and mentors that you'd like to share um, coming up. What what's helped influence you? Your not only the want and the passion to hockey, but also just helping you get to those next levels of of you know watching either watching or learning what guys do? Uh, I mean, obviously, it goes without saying, my my parents were were definitely a huge help in my career. With Without them, I, I wouldn't be where I am today. But uh, in terms of a, a hockey mentor outside of my family, uh, Mike Foligno was great to me. He was awesome. He was my coach in uh, in Sudbury for three years, and I had him again in, in pro in Chicago in the American League. Um, he was a, a perfect coach for me. Uh, he was a guy that didn't care if you were skilled, you know, didn't care where you came from, didn't care where you were drafted. Uh, he demanded re- your absolute most you could give him, and if you gave him all you had, he re- would reward you. And I mean, that was, that was great for, for a guy like me, um, you know, kind of put it all on the line for him. And, and at the end of the day, he'd reward you, whether it was, you know, being a young guy, getting on the power play or, or being a young guy, getting on the penalty kill or, or getting a chance to play with some of the skilled guys on a, on a first or second line. So uh, along with that too, uh, you know, I, I think he saw that I had a, a, a chance to, you know, maybe make a career of it. And it was, it was really helpful with me. You know, he, he helped uh, pick out weaknesses in my game, but also uh, he pointed out things that, that I was, you know, did well and, and things that I could do in order to be successful. And I mean, he'd go through game tape with me. He'd, he'd spend time with me during practice to, to kind of help me. I mean, even in, the American league, I can remember him staying out with me. <laughs> I hated it at the time, but I mean, he'd stay out with me after, you know, practice for an hour and he'd, he'd skate me into the ground, just do his skating drills because he knew I had to become a, a, a better skater if I wanted to get to the next level. So uh, he, he took a lot of his time and uh, a lot of his effort to, to help me uh, become a, a better player and for that I'll be forever grateful I mean he's he's one of the few coaches I've I've had that I skate through a brick wall for so uh yeah he, he was definitely probably my biggest hockey mentor yeah. and I think a lot of players could go with and agree with this but you're, you're going to go through the hockey journey with some great coaches some good coaches and you're going to have some bad coaches uh some that you know, are, bring something good to the table, but also a lot of weak, they bring weaknesses as well. And you're like, oh, that guy doesn't relate well to me or where he's not a really good skills type of coach or, you know, maybe he doesn't even know how to write on the board or, or communication to the players. There's, there's a lot of different things that can go into um, the experience with the coach. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's, that's where it comes down to you and how you understand um, I guess part of the life skills thing of how to navigate through the hockey journey and up to the, the pros. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, like you said, you're not always going to have 
great coaches, you're all, not always going to have coaches to get along with, right? Uh, it, it's like anything in life. You're not going to get along with everybody you meet, but you have to try to respect them and and understand, you know, at least what they're trying to teach, whether you believe in it or not, because at the end of the day, they are your boss and they're, whether you like it or not, they control your ice time, right? So, uh yeah, that that was another hard hard thing too for me. I mean, if I had a coach that was a skilled guy that really loved his skilled players, I'm obviously not a skilled guy. So, you know, I, I kind of had to. Uh, I I would go in and and talk to them or just kind of say like, hey, what what can I do to maybe get some more ice time or, you know, could you help me do this or you know what whatever the case. You, there's there's also things I wish I would have done with with other coaches you know, being older now and being able to look back on it. But I think that's a part of maturing, not only as a person, but as a, as a hockey player too. So. One big point I'd like to share with the, uh, the, the viewers and the, the players, parents and coaches, but as you mentioned, your coach there, Mike Lino was, was putting time in for you. And, and when they put time in, they care, right? They care for that individual or for that team. And you know, sometimes kids, I've been in that situation where it's like, oh, he's all over me. He's pecking on me. Why does he keep time in? But, but at the end of the day, you know, if they're putting their time in, they usually care about you most, most times. Of course, sometimes when they're all over you, they could be trying to mess with you and that stuff too. But you kind of know if they're trying to make you better and help you. Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, Mike was so hard on me in junior. I mean, he'd be, he'd be the first guy to yell at me and say things I can't say on this because there's little kids <laughs> kids watching, you know, but at, at the end of the day, I, like, like you just said, I, I knew that he cared because he took the time to tell me whether it was yelling at me one day or pulling me into an office the next day and, and speaking to me in complete calm manner. Um, I mean, I can, there's a funny story from, my first underage year in, in junior, uh, we, we were short a couple of players and we had called up uh, guys from a, like our local junior team, right? And I was still on the fourth line and I called my agent at the time and said, uh, Mark, you know, like we've called up guys that are going to play two games and never going to play in the OHL again. Like, why am I stuck on the fourth line? And I said, well, why don't you just go into Mike's office and, and ask him why you're on the fourth line still? So sure enough, like just a young 14 or 15, 16 year old kid, like pretty scared. I'm, I'm intimidated this guy. Like he's a thousand, thousand games in the NHL, pretty tough guy, still pretty buff and walk into the office as Mike, you know, kind of a word with you. Yeah, sure. No problem. What's up? Sit down, just shaking in my boots, like scared. And so, you know, Mike, like we got all these call-ups right now. And I'm just wondering why I'm on the fourth line. He said, Deets, because I don't have a fifth line to get out of here, and that was that was the end of it. So, like it was, it was just humorous stuff like that. And uh, you know, he he said that, and I felt like an idiot after. But sure enough, a couple games later, uh, you know, I was playing on the third line and started to kill penalties and and stuff like that. So he was a guy that could could bust your balls and and kind of give you a hard time. But at the end of the day, uh, he was a he was a people's guy and a and a player's coach, and I I loved him for it. So it was much.